Hello, welcome back to Colonial Airstream. The camping lifestyle, well, it's all about relaxing, right? Get away from work, get away from the normal lifestyle, and just go out there and see the country and relax. So why not have an Airstream all about relaxing? This is the all new 2018 Airstream Tommy Bahama 19CB Bambi. The interior headroom is six foot seven and a half inches. That's from the floor to the ceiling. The exterior height to the top of the air conditioning is nine foot nine inches. So it's under 10 foot. Our interior uh, width is seven foot seven. The exterior width we talked about previously, that's eight foot wide. Uh, the hitch weight is 550 pounds. And this has an axle rating of 5,000 pounds. The net carrying capacity, well you can put 800 pounds. You deduct some of that if you did have some additional factory options. So I'm happy to announce that mid-model year 2018, Airstream has brought the Tommy Bahama Edition to the 19-foot floor plan. It's 19 foot 2 inches. That's from the center of the ball to the very back bumper. The trailer is 8 foot wide and uh, has a, a lot of special elements that are part of the Tommy Bahama package. The unique embroidering on the sunbrella, a custom sunbrella awning material comes with two chairs, folding chairs, that zip up and go into a little uh, compartment, a little cooler outside, has a bottle opener built into the front, and you can put plenty of uh, ice cold drinks inside this cooler. And to store it, you can put it underneath the dinette when you're in travel. Screen door guards, well, they also have Tommy Bahama logo on them. See it from the inside and outside. A little design here in the bottom. Very, very unique. Let's take a walk inside and see what they did with the interior. Look at this heavy duty grab handle. This thing lights up at night. There's even a doorbell. So your neighbors come over, they want to come over for uh, cocktails. Well, they could ring their doorbell and come right in. The first thing that you see when you come inside this trailer is this little liquor cabinet. These partitions lift up and then you can move these over for different bottles and then it comes with uh, four of these style glasses. And you have little wine, stemless wine glasses on the bottom and this is all backlit. It's got a a Lexan style door. So that's one of the first things you see. And this will be a little bit different than a standard 19 CB floor plan where it'd have a pantry here, but they do give you a little bit of storage here, which normally would be your magazine rack. The flooring material is extremely durable. This is a, a vinyl woven uh, mat. This is embedded into a rubber membrane, so it's actually soft to the touch. Very easy to sweep out, and you can wipe it up with a damp cloth, but it goes with the overall look and feel. Also, up top here, we have an ice maker. This is a portable ice maker, pretty heavy duty. Plugs right into a standard electrical outlet. And then they give you a storage compartment here for some of your other items. And the, the whole face comes off so it's easy to load in and out. And uh, let's open up a couple of these boxes and see what we got here. We got a bottle opener and a corkscrew. This is uh, another bottle opener. It's a little fish, part of their logoing. And these you could uh, throw in the freezer and throw them into uh, cocktails. They'll keep your uh, drink cold instead of using ice cubes. But the floor plan is extremely wide open. It's a very wide open floor plan. This is good. It sleeps up to four people. So you could have two adults sleep in the bed in the back and then two kids or one adult or two adults in a dinette up front. And um, if you have a dog, there's plenty of room here in the hallway to get around the dog. If the dog wants to lay down, you're not stepping over the dog. There's uh, some wall design here that's unique to Tommy Bahama. 
And this is all plywood with laminate. There's not one bit of particle board in any of the Airstream travel trailers. And this is not a sticker. This is actually regular laminate, kitchen countertop type laminate. The corner is solid maple on this model. And all the constructions, pocket hole screws versus staples, uh, they're gonna hold up a lot more in the long run. And then you have a louvered wardrobe door and they have leather cabinet poles so that's for all the cabinet poles there's unique corian they use specifically on the tommy bahama edition this is all solid surface very easy to clean if you scratch it you could wet sand it and get the scratch out and then the sink cover is solid corian and it has a deep bowl stainless steel sink as well and the faucet this is a, a very high-end Kohler faucet it has a pull out different spray patterns could spin it here. The cooktop's unique. They use this in the Tommy Bahama and the Classic series exclusively. This has a glass top and it's a three burner. Uh, front is your high output. You got low and medium here in the back. You just select which burner you want on and hit the ignite. Pretty simple. And this has the option of a convection microwave. This is uh, the standard comes with a gas oven. A lot of people like to upgrade to the convection microwave. So it's like a regular microwave, but it will also grill. So there's an electric element on the top that glows cherry red. There's a fan inside that kicks on, circulates the hot air around your food, and actually will cook for you. The bedding is unique to the Tommy Bahama. It comes with sheets and a custom bedspread. And then it's set an accordion privacy door to separate the bedroom from the rest of the living area. It actually has a regular curtain with some rope that ties it back. And then on a standard 19 CB, the television would be mounted on the wall here above the tele, um, refrigerator cabinet. And it'll swing out so you can view it when you're in the dinette. And it will swing around so you can view it in bed. Now the television on the uh, Tommy Bahama edition is actually in the bedroom. And the TV will swing out so you can center it over the bed. And it will also swing around so you can view it while you're at the dinette. This bed is 48 inches wide by 76 inches long. So we call this a corner double bed. And the dinette up front, when this is folded down, it's seven and a half foot long. And the width is about 38 inches. So it's a very generous size bed. Up top here, we have the Polk audio system. Uh, this is an upgrade on the Tommy Bahama. So it's Tommy Bahama Classic, you get the Polk audio system. In the cabinet here, there's a Blu-ray player. It has a USB port on the front. You have more USB port on the side, auxiliary jack in. And then the stereo itself has a little cover so you could cover it up. This trailer has the optional wireless backup camera system. So it's not just for backing up. You could actually put this in your vehicle when you're driving, turn your parking lights on, turn the camera on, you can see who's coming up behind you. When you're changing lanes, you can see who uh, you cleared. So um, th I highly recommend this option. It's about $650, but it comes with a little monitor inside and uh, you just plug that into your 12 volt port in your truck. The hardware is actually upgraded too because these cabinets doors are a lot thicker and heavier than say a Flying Cloud 19. So they upgraded the hardware to heavy duty uh, designer hardware to keep that door open for you. And they are adjustable if you ever wanted to adjust the tension. There's a reading light on either side of the dinette where they're adjustable. Every light in here is LED by the way. You have a spotlight over your dinette and the tabletop is unique to the Tommy Bahama. This is a laminate with a little design, looks like some reclaimed wood. Uh, I really like that. And the edge banding here is a black ribbed edge banding. It's got ultra leather cushions on the bottom. This is premium density foam inside. And then Tommy Bahama special fabric for the backrest. Some of the pillows that come with it. 
really nice pillows here. A lot of this stuff you might be able to buy if you want to dress up your Airstream from the Tommy Bahama store. There's another overhead storage compartment here. You see the radius edge here and the radius here, so it actually dips down inside. This corner becomes a speaker box for the speaker. Give you some base, and this is all backlit so at night it will glow if you decide to turn that light switch on. All your light switches are right here for the cabinet and for the ceiling lights inside the trailer. And there's even an LED light strip underneath the awning that illuminates the whole underside of the awning at night. Absolutely beautiful. Underneath the dinette, there's an electrical outlet. There's also a subwoofer over to the side. Down on the floor, there's a drawer. And I put the little storage bags for the Tommy Bahama chairs inside this drawer and you can see the hardware for pull and again plywood laminate heavy duty j latch seven pound latch keeps this door sh drawer shut when you're towing there's a little area here so if you wanted to kick off your shoes when you came inside the trailer there's a little bit of shoe storage here off to the side there's a propane leak detector down on the floor for uh, unexpected gas leak and then your furnace return is right here and there's two ducts here one in the bathroom and then they actually heat your waste tanks your freshwater tanks in the body underneath this box you got a drawer underneath the sink for silverware and then there's another storage compartment here underneath the kitchen sink this is one of the boxes that is for this candle here on the table the Tommy Bahama candle that comes with the trailer. And then below the convection microwave, there's a deeper drawer. And all the cabinetry, every bit of cabinetry that's in this trailer and every Airstream trailer is carried through that entry door. So they build the shell. The shell is a very, very strong shell. They set it down on the chassis. It's insulation all the way around. It's got equal bad insulation, about two inches. And then the floor is insulated. It's a marine plywood floor. It has I'm sorry, it's a plywood floor with a marine anti-wicking substance painted to the whole entire perimeter of the floor. So if you leave the door open on a rainy day and the floor gets wet and it rolls underneath the floor to the plywood, the plywood will not wick it through. It'll actually repel it and allow it to drain out. Then once the shell is complete, they hand carry all the furniture inside this trailer. So none of this furniture has anything to do with the integrity of the shell. So it's just fastened to the shell and to the floor. So the shell is just as strong, complete, as it would be when it's empty. It's very important. These are true travel trailers. A travel trailer is meant and designed to travel a whole entire country and, sp and spend a good amount of time inside. A lot of manufacturers don't build a true travel trailer. They build a camping trailer for part-time use, maybe a few weekends a year, maybe a few hundred miles. If you want to do extensive travel, you would buy something that is designed more for extensive travel. And that's where Airstream's niche is. This is something they've been doing for over 85 years. And over 70% of the Airstreams built, are they're still on the road and still in use today. That's a pretty high statistic. And that's not accounting for all the Airstreams that get shipped overseas to other countries. You think about that, there's a lot of Airstreams out there. Front window opens all the way out. There's three different height adjustments. There is a rock guard on the exterior that has to be lifted first before you open the window. The curtains on this trailer, they're a little bit unique in, in regards to the design on them compared to a flying cloud. There's a fantastic fan in the trailer. This has a motorized lid, variable speed control. Rain sensor actually shuts the lid down when it rains and it has a quick release screen so you can clean your fan blades and screen off. Uh, this runs on 12 volt power and you can manually lift the lid if you want to. Uh, it will not shut when it rains or you could use the open close lid button here off to the side. The blinds in the galley here, they're a wooden style blind. You can adjust the angles here or you can lift it up and you can see your two porthole windows. You can have it halfway if you would like to, which is pretty cool. On the wall here, we have some more light switches for under cabinet and indirect lights in the cab inside the cabinet. This has a pure sine wave 1000 watt inverter system, which is for your Blu-ray player and your television. 
and one outlet underneath the dinette for a laptop computer. You just turn that on, wait about 30 seconds, the inverter kicks in, takes your stored battery juice, inverts it into electricity so you can run these small appliances for a short period of time. That's standard on this trailer. This trailer also has the optional solar charging system we spoke about earlier. It's an 80 watt panel, slimline panel, and they upgrade the batteries from deep cycle uh, lead acid type battery to uh, absorbed glass mat. They're actually a Lifeline brand and they're group 24 series in size and they're 12 volts. But you can see your battery voltage, solar voltage, solar charge amps, solar amp hours, and your charging status. When you see this light up, that means you are getting some solar gain. The sun's very nice and bright today. You also have a C level two tank monitoring panel. You can see how much battery uh, voltage you have. We have 13.4, so we're in charge right now. Fresh water, which we're at 4%. Gray waste, which we're at zero. And the black waste, which we're at 0%. You can also turn your water pump on from here. And what the water pump does is it pumps up the pressure from the water inside the tank. Once it, uh, pressurizes the system, it will shut off. Then if you turn on a faucet, it will sense a drop in pressure, kick the pump back on to get your water from your tank through your faucet and then down into your gray or black tank. When you're hooked up to city water connection, which is a separate connection on the outside of the trailer, it has a water pressure regulator built into it, prevents your trailer from unexpected uh, bursts in uh, pressure at the campground, and uh, it bypasses your fresh water tank and just supplies water to your faucets every time you turn on with their water pressure, so you don't need your pump on. Overhead roof locker here has uh, sliding doors, a little bit of Tommy Bahama relaxing style design here. And then their slogan here, make life one long weekend. You can see the ducted air conditioning system ductwork. There's a couple ducts here and a few more throughout the trailer. And then you could spin them around. You could also shut one off. So if you're here cooking and you didn't want the cold air to come down on the back of your head, you could shut this particular one off. There's a smoke detector with nine volt battery. You wanna check that periodically. Your cooktop ventilation system and light over your cooktop. There is a louver on the outside that has to be opened. So just remember to do that when you get to the camper and just remember to shut it when you're towing. Inside the wardrobe, there's a light inside. There's a rod with little notches on it, prevents your clothes from sliding back and forth when you're towing. And it's a generous amount of size. You could, you'd be surprised how much you could put inside the wardrobe. And these are your multi-stage battery converter charger. Uh, this converts AC to DC, so when you're plugged into electricity, it's gonna charge your batteries and it's gonna convert that AC to DC so you can still run your lights. Has your breakers, use your electrical breakers, 120 volt breakers, has your GFCI reset, so your outside outlet, kitchen and bathroom outlet, they're all hooked up to uh, GFI outlet. Well, if it does pop, this is where your reset would be. And then this side here is your 12 volt fuses, just like a car. And there's a red LED light that will illuminate next to each and every one of those fuses if you did have a problem and that fuse did blow, which is a pretty rare occasion. The bottom portion, keep this clear and ventilated. There's a little computer fan inside. I could feel it on right now, which is cooling the battery charger down when you're under load. In the bathroom area, there's a vanity up top. You can put some item in, has a little prop rod to keep it open and help assist open. There's a little medicine cabinet, which has a mirror. This is the soap that comes with the Tommy Bahama package. Beautiful faucet here coordinating color they try to match the ultra leather straps here steep stainless steel thick really thick bowl sink there's an electrical outlet in the back here below there's storage and again they even finish off the inside of the cabinets that's a uh, one thing you'll see on other brand trailers open up the cabinets and you'll be able to see how they finish everything off but airstream does a great job and all the hardware is premium hardware so all this hardware could come unsnapped and it's fully adjustable so if you ever needed to change the camber of the door over time as things expand and contract you could do so Over here on the wall, next to the vanity, we have your water heater controls. 
You can turn it on electric or gas, so you decide which source of power you want to use to put your water heater on. The water heater has a six gallon tank, but it gives you nine gallons continuous flow of hot water using a mixer valve that preheats the water before it brings it into the tank and then superheats it when it's in the tank. So you could turn this faucet on hot and get approximately nine gallons to run through this faucet before you run out. Now, no one's gonna turn the water on the hottest setting. It's about 130 degrees. They're gonna mix it with quite a bit of cold water. So you can really extend that to a much longer time frame. We have your lighting control for the bedroom, which is also dimmable. You have a separate vanity light, bathroom light, and the overhead roof locker over the head of the bed. This is your comfort control center. This allows you to control air conditioning and electric heat pump. Electric heat pumps designed to work when it's above 42 degrees. Just keep that in mind. Your furnace will do your main source of heat when it's below that temperature. Also, that's going to heat your tanks too, so don't forget about that. The heated tank system gives you about a seven degree boost in the temperature in your tank for unexpected drops in temperatures. So what does that mean? Well, if it's 20 degrees during the day and 10 at night, well, your plumbing's probably going to freeze. The way it's designed is if you're camping, you're in the mountains, at night it gets below freezing. As long as that furnace is on, it's going to prevent your tank from freezing, your gray, black, and your fresh water as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind. You got to run the furnace when it's below freezing. You could also control the furnace from here as well. You could change your temperature. You can also have just a fan circulate inside the air conditioning, and there's a low, medium, and high setting. And you could also see what your inside temp is, change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius, and then you could change the fan speed from low, medium, and high up top here in air conditioning. There's another fantastic fan over to bed. And then right over the bathroom door here, there's another fan that you could push up, and push the button, and that'll exhaust stale air out of the bathroom. Now, there's something majorly different about this bathroom door. On a regular 19 CB Bambi, the door is on a 45. So then it opens, it goes right up against the bed, you close the door, you have a good amount of room in the bathroom, but what if you wanted more room? Well, what they do unique on the Tommy Bahama is actually bring the door in, which gives you more room to get in and out of the bed, more room to make the bed. I could reach back here now. But when you're in the bathroom, it actually locks in like that. So now you have more leg room if you're using the toilet. There's more room to get dressed or towel down when you get out of the shower. And what holds it in, there's a leather strap here that locks it all in place when you're towing. And there's magnetic strip to keep it shut when you're in the trailer, so if you don't want to put the strap on each time. And inside the bathroom, we have a porcelain toilet the regular foot pedal for filling the bowl up and for flushing. We have the unique wallpaper design that's specifically for the Tommy Bahama edition. We have the same blinds that were in the galley area in the bathroom as well with two porthole windows. And the shower. This is a two-piece fiberglass shower. There's a bottom piece and a top that overlaps so you don't have to worry about water rolling over. There's even a clothesline inside here that you could pull across and then you could lock it in place. And this would be ideal for drying a bathing suit or something very light. I re wouldn't recommend putting a whole bunch of wet towels on it or jeans. It's kind of heavy for it. Also, I wouldn't recommend leaving this out with items on it when you're towing down the highway. A little towel bar in the bathroom. It comes with these towels. The style towel, these are really nice towels. And it has a roll away shower door. Snaps in place, seems very flimsy. Believe me when I say this, we have not replaced any of them. We've been using this shower door for over 10 years. People seem to think that it's flimsy, it's gonna break, but it, it surprises them after year five, six, seven, eight, that it still works fine and is still intact. It has a squeegee built into it that rolls the water off of it when you roll it back and it's mold and mildew resistant. The shower head hangs up on the wall. This is a uh, very nice hardware that Airstream gives you. 
and uh, you have the hand wind, you could pause it if you have your temperature set to your desired temperature and you want to lather up real quick without messing with your temperature down below, you turn it back on and rinse off. A quick shower, that's what it's all about. If you want to take a very long shower, you could actually go to the campground, into their little clubhouse here, they'll have a shower area if you want to take a very long shower. And there's a ledge inside, so if you wanted to sit, and shave your legs uh, for uh, f folks that are participating in act activity. Well, you have some area to um, to do that. There's a drain plug in the shower that is not designed to fill the bottom up to bathe the pet, but it's very important to keep this in when you're towing the trailer to prevent the water from sloshing out of your pee trap, which could then bring tank odor in the trailer. Now people say, well, it's just a gray tank. How bad is that going to smell? Well, after a few years of spitting toothpaste down the sink and cleaning dishes off, uh, the tank could smell over time. So it's very important to seal the tank up when you're towing the trailer. Over to bed, there's a roof locker that's backlit, louver door, very deep. This is where I have your bed skirt. I didn't put this on here, it's still in the package. There's another speaker as part of the audio system. There's a carbon monoxide detector in the bedroom. Just make sure you check that, nine volt battery every six months. And then the mattress. The mattress is the same mattress we use on all the other Airstream models, just with a different cut for this floor plan. But it's a premium pillow top memory foam mattress. People love these Airstream mattresses. I have a lot of people that have older Airstreams. They hear about this mattress, they upgrade through our parts department. So uh, you'll, you'll really like the night's sleep that you get out of that. There's a storage compartment underneath the bed with storage bins. Inside the bin, there's some different accessories that come with the trailer, the owner's bag that you get with all the owner's manuals. And there's two more bins all the way in the back of this. But you can see it's finished on the inside and you can actually see the plywood edge here. In the rear of the bed, there's an emergency escape window. In case of emergency, you pull the two red handles, twist. Pull a quick release screen out and then push the window out. It's on a hinge so it's not going to fall out. And then you can climb out of the trailer, yell for help, or breathe fresh air. And then when you want privacy at night, you just undo the back curtain, slide it across, and you can snap it right in on either side. It gives you a lot of privacy. A little spotlight over the bed as well. And the window next to the bed works the same way, but this is a stacked window. You got an 18 inch, one inch wide window on the top and a pour hole on the bottom. And you grab both handles, you lift up, bring it down, lock it in place when you're towing to open it. Pull, twist, lift with both hands even. You got three different heights, top, medium, and bottom. So make sure when you're walking around the outside of the trail, you remember you have the window open, otherwise you could smack your head. Where the television is in the bedroom, there's a little rack up top for your remote controls. And there's also a USB charge port here. And then behind the television, when you pull on the handle to release it, is your electrical outlet and also your antenna booster. There is an omnidirectional antenna on the roof of the trailer that picks up over the air TV reception. Well, in order for that to work, you actually have to turn it on. So you're going to turn the antenna booster on. That will boost up the signal and give you some reception. Just hit auto program on the TV. Anywhere from 2 to 18 stations I've seen, depending on where you are. The outside of the trailer has a cable input, so you can just hook right into cable at a campground. Or you can bring a uh, portable satellite dish, hook it right into the outside connection, bring your receiver with you, hook it up to the TV. Now you have satellite TV in your trailer. The refrigerator we talked about before, the automatic two-way four cubic foot refrigerator, just turn it on, just how simple it is. When it's on automatic mode, it's going to check to see if you're plugged into electricity. If you are, it'll run on electricity. It takes about six to seven hours to completely cool down. Absorption refrigerator is going to remove the heat. It's not going to make cold, it's going to remove the heat. It takes a little while to do, so just be patient. So I'd recommend turn it on the day before you leave for your trip. Get it nice and cool, put your items in it. Before you hit the road, highly recommend shut that refrigerator off, shut your propane tanks off. Now you got anywhere from five to seven hours of drive time. Your food and your refrigerator will stay cool and safe for you. Inside up top, we have a freezer compartment. 
and adjustable shelves. You can remove a shelf and um, you can manually switch it to gas if you wanted to. If you, if you had low electricity and you're running the air conditioning and maybe your TV and the campground uh, is not giving you enough amperage, you could actually switch the fridge, which runs with four or five amps of electricity, over to propane to save you some battery amperage. And if the refrigerator misfires on propane, the little check light will come on here to warn you that you don't have propane and it's shut off. So just uh, make sure you look at that to make sure that's not on and your refrigerator is working. Uh, you can store things up top here over the, the cabinet. You have some coat hooks when you come in the entry door. There's also an electrical outlet here. And then what you want to see, what the door looks like when it's shut. <clears throat> this allows some light through and you can see your screen door guards here. Now I'm going to set the dyna up, make it into a bed. So what I'm going to do first is just remove these decor pillows out of the way. <clears throat> the backrest snaps to the wall that's already unsnapped lift the bottom pad up leave it there off to the side same thing on this side now everything's clear and out of the way we could lift up the table push the leg in just release it here and then lift up a little bit harder and it'll come snap out of its cleats hurt it swing it down Lays on top of the two benches. There's a rubber grommet that keeps it centered. Then we're going to lay down the bottom cushion, detach the backrest. Very simple to do. It's like building a puzzle. And squeeze in the middle cushions. Now, when they're new, they're uh, kind of tough to do. Just got to give it some persuasion. Then you could use this as a head and foot board. Or if you're tall, you can remove one and slide it underneath. Or if you wanted to make it into a deep lounge, you could just lean it against the wall. And then you can sit back, relax, and watch television. Let's go outside. I want to show you some of the exterior features that you have on this trailer. Okay. Outside here, the screen door and the door meet together and snap into the body here. Let's take some time and talk about this door. It takes approximately eight hours for one person to manufacture and create this door at Airstream Factory. It is a work of art, just like the whole rest of the trailer is. Airstreams are not produced. They're crafted. They're all handcraft trailers, They're all slightly different in some way. And that's part of the beauty and the heritage of Airstream. TIG welded here, all aluminum structure, six rivets on a heavy duty stainless steel hinge, insulation inside the door, clad on aluminum on the inside, privacy window, heavy duty deadbolt, and the entry door handle locks itself. So there's a separate key for either, and none of the other keys in the industry are keyed to this trailer. So it's something very important for security. Everybody loves that sound of that door slamming. It is so solid with these heavy duty aluminum hinges here. You can see up top there's an extruded aluminum gutter rail over the door, an outside LED porch light which has an aluminum housing. The door frame itself is heavy gauge extruded aluminum, TIG welded at the seams in the bottom. There's some grip tape so you don't slip on the way out. And then there's an angled piece of aluminum here so you can sweep the floor out easily inside. And to bring the step in, just give it a kick. To bring it out, pull it out with your foot or by hand. It's a tooly step, a very heavy duty step for this trailer. This is your refrigerator ventilation system. There's a fan inside, thermostatically controlled that cools this compartment down. And this has an insect screen on it so bugs don't fly inside. Do not store anything inside these compartments is a ventilation compartment only. You have extruded aluminum belt line protection that protects that overlapping center seam of the trailer, dresses it up quite a bit too. And there's an extruded aluminum wheel well 
trim that goes over the wheel well. You have an outside GFI protect electrical outlet. This has heavy duty Goodyear Endurance Lord Range E 22575 R15 inch tires. Uh, these are to be inflated 80 PSI. You also have to check your lug nut periodically, very important after you take a tire off to check it after 10, 25, or 50 miles. Uh, just make sure you do that as well. And uh, the whole underbelly of the trailer, the whole underside is all wrapped up in aluminum. So there's insulation between the floor and the underbelly, gives you a little crawl space. That's all wrapped up in aluminum as well. The wheel wells also insulated. This is your Tommy Bahama medallion that comes with the trailer. It's all aluminum, it's a painted. This is the water heater exterior. Just make sure you don't put the chair too close to this if you have it on gas. There's a drain plug in the bottom, pressure relief valve. When you turn the switch on for gas inside, the gas valve opens, mixed with combustible air, ignites in the tube, and excess heat and exhaust come out of this area here. Just check periodically for spider webs. And again, don't store anything in this compartment either. This is strictly for service access. If you have a flat tire, there is a spare tire underneath the A-frame up front. And there's specific jack locations underneath the trailer. There's a plate and there's a decal that points to that plate that says jack it here. There's one on this side and one on that side. And these jacks are power stabilizer jacks but it even has the little knob on the outside so you can manually crank them down if you wanted to. But who's gonna do that if they could just hit a switch? So when we get to the other side, I'll show you where that switch is. These corner panels, these are all stretch formed. So it's a flat sheet, just like the side sheet. They have a mold inside the factory. They grab it and they stretch it over that mold to give you this curved. There's all different molds for all different panels inside. Beautiful. Cast aluminum taillight housings. Look at the beautiful workmanship in each one of these taillights. LED lights here for blinkers and stoplights. Bison plate bracket. Rear window awning. This is part of the window awning package, which I highly recommend getting. Just pull that down. Lift, swing the bars around. And roll it away. And when it's up, protect an aluminum shield. There's your backup camera and then you have your Airstream logo here. These are raised letters. The trunk compartment is lockable. When you want to open it you just lift, twist, and you can see here this will squeeze it tight when you close the door. Nice and tight seal. This is insulated, weather sealed, we know it's lockable. Diamond plating on the floor inside here, and there's even a light off the side so you can illuminate this whole compartment. Gains you access to your low point trains for your hot and cold water. There's a couple more low point, point trains inside. When Colonial Airstream gives your hands on orientation, and we welcome you to stay at night and try everything out, we're going to show you how to winterize it and where your valves are. So if you wanted to do it yourself, you could do so. This is the uh, manual override for your electric hitch jack. This is your manual override for your power, power stabilizer jacks. And if you're going to use a low pressure grill, like a little camping grill, there's a quick disconnect for a propane line in the front of the trailer so you could cook outside. If you have a high pressure grill, unfortunately it's not going to work, but you can just hook it right up to your propane tank, so problem solved. And then the tool for the awning is in here as well. I've done the awning video many, many times, so we're not going to do that here today on how to operate the awning, but we do have other videos on our YouTube channel specifically for operating the Zip-D awning. Extruder aluminum bumper, polished, has uh, rubber caps on the end. You can lift the lid up. Diamond plating inside, holes drilled so water could drain out, so you could put wheel chocks, blocks of wood in here. This is a wet compartment. This is a dry compartment. Little reflectors here in the back. On this side of the trailer, if you get the optional window awning package, this awning covers the whole side of the trailer. It prevents this whole side of the trailer from heating up. Roll this one up, just pull, and then you can use that awning tool to lock it or you can do it by hand. This is your cable and satellite input, so you can put your portable dish here or you can hook into the park cable at a campground. This is your dump station. Dump station, you're gonna use the premium sore hose that Colonial Airstream gives you as part of your RV starter kit. Has a clear elbow end, and it has a multi-step 
size so you can screw it into different campgrounds connections and we give you a rubber donut just in case it doesn't fit you could have a secure connection you're going to take the cap off here snap your waist hose on and then when it's time to empty the tank you're always going to empty your black tank first it's your toilet waste there's toilet de debris inside that that's going to now get flow through your waste hose so when you pull that out it will discharge that waste you're going to close it and then you're going to open up your gray tank which is your sink and shower waste just to flush out your waste hose there's a light out here that illuminates this area at night if necessary and to take it one step further there is a sewer flusher in this trailer so after you're all done with your trip and you're about to wrap it up and take it home before you put it away in storage after you empty your black tank hook up a garden hose not your white freshwater hose but a garden hose to this connection here inside the tank there's a wand under pressure that will clean the walls of your tank out to get all that residual waste out of your trailer so it doesn't smell when you put away to storage please don't get that connection and this connection confused because this is your city water connection for campground water pressure with the water pressure regulator built in this is your black tank flush don't get it mixed up so when you want to hook up the city water cat connection at a campground just open the cap screw your hose in have your outside water filter if you want to use one right here right before or right at the campground side this is the power cord connection below this is a 25 foot 30 amp 125 volt power cord quick disconnect marine co just twist to unlock it we have it plugged into our 30 amp at the building colonial ocean gives you premium power cord adapter it adapts this from 30 to 15 amp so you can plug it at home and charge just note that you cannot run your air conditioning off the 15 amp adapter so you need true do need a little bit more than 15 amps to run the air conditioning there's an outside shower that's standard on this trailer i'm going to use our 751 key here open the little door take the wand out you can hang it up on this little holder here hot and cold pretty nice just remember when you're winterizing don't forget this we do a lot of replacements uh, on outside showers because people forget to winterize them and then the waist hose when you're done with it you can take it off take your elbows and adapters off take this cap here off slide it right in you can put uh up to a 15 foot waste hose in this storage tube there's your furnace compartment and your furnace discharge just don't park next to a big pile of leaves this is gets very hot so it is uh, flammable combustible materials keep them away cooktop ventilation system just pull the little tabs down and then when you're when you turn the cooktop on it's going to blow out uh, just make sure you lock these when you're towing you don't want this flapping around in the wind and then this is unique to the Tommy Bahama on the 19 this little compartment here this is how you bring down your power stabilizer jacks so you have a front set and a rear set just make sure when you bring them down they don't pinch your power cord and these are not designed to level the trailer they're specifically designed to take the bounce out of your walk and stabilize the trailer so it's not going to lift the trailer up off the ground you can level the trailer using leveling blocks underneath the tires and use your electric hitch shack up front to raise and lower this also has down here your vin plate with your tire information tire recommended tire pressure and production date and then the compartment next to that is your potable water compartment so that is what you're going to use to fill up your 24 gallon fresh water tank take the little key 751 key open the door take the cap off stick the hose in loosely turn the water on low when it's done it will spit out a relief valve here and then underneath the dinette there's an access panel that you can take off to get to the water pump and you could also use it to, to do the low point drain these are your stainless steel wrap protectors this is what's going to protect your body from debris that kicks up in the road this is aluminum this is stainless steel this is gapped so if you hit something it allows some deflection without denting the body behind because it's gapped things could go and get stuck back there so you take three nuts off it's on a piano hinge you can swing it out clean behind it swing it away lock it in place 
The rock guards in the front have a unique Tommy Bahama graphics package on them. You take the two tethers off, lift, lock it in place using the neural knob on either side. Now you can open up your window from inside. Then you can take a Phillips head screwdriver, turn a quarter turn, unsnap this, swing it around, and lift it off. You can clean your glass. Just make sure you put these in securely before you tell you it won't fly open when you're driving. Could do some damage to the trailer. Make sure you put these tethers on too before you start towing away. Electric hitch jack, you can raise and lower the trailer. There's a light outside. Just remember when you have your jacks down, don't touch this because you'll bend your jacks. And that tool, you can manually override this if you need it to. It's even a bubble level on the top. Colonial Airstream gives you a hitch lock, a hitch couple of locks, and so it could slide this forward and lift it up to slip a ball from underneath. It's a two and five sixteenth inch ball. The frame pan is black. You got 11,500 pound safety chains. Make sure you crisscross them. Standard seven pin connection. Uh, make sure your vehicle has a charge lead hooked up and an electric brake controller as well. And then this is your trailer breakaway cable that if the trailer ever came loose, from your truck, this would pull out and activate the brakes on the trailer. Never use this as a parking brake. What's gonna happen? The batteries gonna eventually die, you'll burn out the magnets and the brakes, then your trailer will wind up rolling down the hill anyway. So this is just for emergency purposes, and it's always recommend to test this periodically to make sure it's working properly, make sure the cable is not frayed. Propane tanks, Colonial will fill them for you to two 30-pound bottles. You can manually switch from left to right, you could have one bottle on at a time or both. Just make sure you bleed the, bleed the propane system out. And if one bottle goes empty, another one's on and ready to go, it will automatically switch over. And how do you know if one's empty? Well, whatever one it's pointed to, if this is showing red versus green, that bottle's empty. This wing nut comes undone. And then allow you to lift the bottle cover off so you can get your propane tank out and get it filled. Colonial Airstream also gives you a battery compartment lock. These batteries are quite expensive, so you don't want anybody to steal them while you have your Airstream in storage. So we give you a little lock for it. Uh, that's part of uh, what Colonial does here. Let me just get the right key set up for it. An easier absorbed glass mat, 12 volt, lifeline batteries in parallel. If you get the standard batteries, there is a, quite a bit of battery maintenance you gotta do. So just make sure you check your water level on those type of batteries. On this side, we have your ZAMP quick disconnect. So you can buy a ZAMP solar panel, portable panel, have its own controller built into it. Just plug it right in, and that will give these batteries an additional charge. Spare tire bracket, just pull the pin, slide this across, lift your jack up high enough, spare tire will come down, it's cradled in, it's a full-size spare and a steel wheel, pull it out. And you could uh, change your tire using your jack and your tools from your tow vehicle. Just make sure you check your lug nut size, make sure it matches what's on the trailer. Again, this is Patrick Botticelli with Colonial Airstream in New Jersey. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love it. I'll see you soon. I think it's about time. I need to relax.